Lisa here. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. In a couple of days, it's my birthday. Yes, I'm just going to be an older lady than what I am now. But a good dear friend of mine visited from North Carolina and she brought me cabbage. They grow an abundance of cabbage up in North Carolina and it's really hard to grow here in Georgia because of the heat. I had 50 pounds of cabbage, so we've been eating lots and lots of cabbage. But what we want to do when making cabbage is you are trying to encourage good bacteria growth, which is the lactobacillus uh, bacteria, and you want to discourage bad bacteria from growing. So what we need to do is create an anaerobic, which is a non-oxygen environment for the bacteria to grow. I'm going to be making it in a half gallon mason jar. The one thing that I did purchase I saw this last year and I wanted to give it a try is they're called visco disc. Now with the cabbage making the sauerkraut you want to make sure that it stays submerged and under the brine which is your salt water and in this case if you don't have the cabbage under the brine then you grow bacteria on the top of it and we don't want to do that so these were uh, sold by the same company that does the tapper lids and since I've never used them before and I've never even seen a review on them I wanted to give them a try so they come with in one pack you can order the they have them in wide mouth and regular mouth these are the little uh, and these are not reusable they're the inserts to keep the cabbage pressed down I wasn't sure how flexible these were going to be so I went ahead and I also ordered the insert to put it down in there and that's going to help keep that cabbage pressed below that brine so I don't get mold growing on the top and this is the insert to be honest you, you get a regular mouth and a wide mouth but to be honest I don't believe you're going to need this if you're interested in purchasing one of a set of these and it's fairly flexible so you know you should be able to put this in the mason jar without having the insert tool we're going to find out and it says to use a fork to lift it out we're also going to try that just to see how simple it is to get out i've got my lid and i've got an airlock now i make these myself bald sells these and you can get these plastic lids also at walmart and the top i put a little grommet in it these are just rubber grommets you get two in a pack And the airlock you can just you can buy from Amazon. There's a, a several different companies. You just put some water in it. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then you simply drill a hole in the top of the plastic lid, put the grommet in there, and the airlock fits right down in the hole. Very simple. These are in, very inexpensive, and I'll put a link in this video to where you can order all of the parts. And I'm going to be using some fine sea salt. What we want to do with the sea salt is we want to encourage the lactobacillus bacteria to grow however we want to discourage bad bacteria so by doing that the salt is going to help the lactobacillus grow and it's going to discourage the bad bacteria I get this just as thin as I can possibly get it I've got my utensils ready and you know you don't need this special equipment to make kraut you can put a lid on it, but you'll need to burp it every day because as it starts releasing the juices and the bacteria starts growing, it will cause the uh, gases. So you want to make sure that you burp it. So what I'm going to do is just start with taking about a third of my cabbage and pop it in another bowl. The reason I do this is because once I put the salt on it, I want the salt to be able to be in the layers. Through this process, as the cabbage starts breaking down and starts releasing some of the fluid and you want to encourage that growth if you use too much salt you're going to kill the lactobacillus so what i do is using a mason jar i don't go any more than three tablespoons of salt however you can do it with two tablespoons you just want to make sure that you're at the right amount so you don't discourage the growth and allow other things to grow and so you don't put too much in there. Now I'm just going to dump it right back into the biggest bowl. I just covered it with a tea towel. I'm going to let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before I start kneading it really good. 
Okay, I allowed the cabbage to sit about, it's been about 20 minutes. And I'm sure that you can't see it, but it's really, it's gone down a lot. Then it was kind of up at the very top of the bowl. And you can see that it is releasing a lot of the moisture and the water content from the cabbage itself. But, but all I'm going to do is start kneading it and squeezing to help release some of those fluids. Because I want the cabbage to be completely covered in um, salt water, which is brine. So if I can use the water from the cabbage and the salt that I've already put it in there, then that's great. But you can see it's really releasing a lot of the fluid and it's shrank down a good bit. We're going to squeeze it a little bit more. And I'm getting a good bit of fluid or water released in the bottom of the bowl, but it's not going to be enough to actually cover the cabbage itself. Next, I'm just going to stuff it in the jar. And I've got a pastry, it's for uh, cake icings and things of that nature. I'm going to use it and just to kind of help press this down. I want to make sure that I don't have a lot of air bubbles and things of that nature in it. Because remember, we're trying to create an anaerobic environment, which is no air. To make my brine solution, one quart of water, and I'm probably not going to need all of the brine there. It's got a quart jar and I'm going to add one tablespoon of the fine sea salt. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm just pressing the cabbage down. Alright, I didn't quite have enough cabbage to fill the jar and I want to be able to have the cabbage all the way to the top of the jar because remember, we want to be able to press it down and if I've got it halfway in the jar, that's going to be a long way to try to weight that cabbage down in order to keep the environment an anaerobic environment. So I went ahead and chopped up just a little bit more cabbage. This was a five pound head. I weighed it before I started, and it was a five pound. So if you need to add more, no problem. For my brine, uh, I did warm my water up a little bit, just for about 30 seconds in the microwave, just so it was would be able to um, dissolve the sea salt. So I've got one quart of warm water, and I'm adding one tablespoon of fine sea salt to it. Just going to stir this up. I think that's good to go. And simply pour it over the cabbage. I do want the cabbage to be submerged. We want it to be completely covered. As it starts souring, it's going to shrink down. So I know it's going to be covered. But in the beginning, until it gets to that process, I do want to make sure that it's covered down in there. So as you can see, the insert itself has little holes in it. And I don't want the cabbage to come up through there. I want to make sure that it's completely submerged. And it did say in the directions to leave about two inches headspace. So I've cleaned an outside leaf of the cabbage from when I started. I'm just going to pop that over the top of the cabbage. That way I have one solid piece on there. And we're going to pop this down. I don't want to use the inserter because I want you to see if it's possible. I didn't need the insert tool. So if I stick the fork in, the piece came out quite nicely. So you can actually reuse it. Okay, so I've got my cabbage submerged. I'm going to put my lid on. It's just a tube, and it's got a tube on the inside of it. And if you'll, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little line going around it, which is your fill line. So once I put this on top of inside of the rubber grommet, you take this inserter and you drop it down over it, and it's a floater. You fill it to the water up to the fill line there, and then this piece will float, but as the gases start to be released, this will come up and the gases can come out. And then the lid has little holes. I, I doubt you can see them, but it's got little holes around the edges, and it allows the gas to escape. So we're just going to pop that down. I've uh, poured out the brine, the salt water. I've just got regular water in here. I'm going to fill it up to the fill line and pop the cap on. As the cabbage starts releasing all those gases and you constantly see these little air bubbles in there, you'll stop seeing the air bubbles and you'll know when it's ready. Okay, I sat it in a, a glass container just because, especially if you're using like a mason jar lid, you want to unscrew the lid daily to allow the gases to escape. You want to be able to release those. And when you do that, sometimes you will get 
some of the gas and some of the juices flow out and I want to make sure that it doesn't damage my um, countertop where I sit it. You see how the gases as they release and you get more of the fluid and the cabbage releases more of the fluids it comes up and it spills out. I've got a little bit in the bottom of the bowl but mostly it's on top of the jar. We are on day, I believe it's day 12. I just topped off the water yesterday, but let's open it and check inside. Still no cabbage coming to the top. Ooh, and it's smelling very crowdy. I really like the Visco disc. The gas has stopped bubbling. I'm going to transfer it now into jars. I need to remove the... Visco disc that was in there to keep it down, and I'm really pleased with the, these discs. It works great. Let's see how many we get. I ended up getting four pint jars, and we did eat a little bit a couple of days before I actually separated it. I took some out for a meal. I poured the brine that was over it, over the, the um, sauerkraut, because I did want the sauerkraut to remain, or all the cabbage to remain, below the brine level. However, one of the jars was about an inch short of brine, so I just mixed up a 50-50 mixture of just white vinegar and water and topped it off. That'll be fine. So during the, the last couple of months, um, I have gotten 5,000 subscribers and I was trying to think of a way that I could do a giveaway for those of you who have been following my channel and who have been supporting me all along. A lot of times when you do a giveaway, you get all of these people who do nothing but skim YouTube video names that have giveaways and contests in them and those aren't really your supporters they're not the ones that have been there for you so I wanted to do something that was just for you guys so what I've decided to do is I know there's a lot of you out there that um, would love to try making kraut and trust me it is so easy especially when you have the right tools now do you have to have a visco disc and an insert no you don't there are ways to get around it, but trust me, these things make life so much easier when you're trying to make kraut. Do you have to have an airlock? No, you can put a lid on this and burp the lid every day. However, the airlocks make this so much easier because it allows the gases that build up, rather than building up in the jar, it allows them to come to the top and come out so you're not having to check it every day. I probably check these once a week and it took about three and a half weeks to get it where I like it. I am going to store them in the refrigerator, and I would say up to six months. Mine never lasts that long. We are a big sauerkraut eating family, and they never last that long. And these little lids are just for the, the airlocks to go into. So what I've decided to do is have a giveaway for you guys. I'm not going to announce it in the title. You didn't see it in the title. So those of you who have stuck around through the video, I'll know, and I do appreciate all you guys' support. But what you're going to get in this giveaway are two lids with the gaskets on there, the grommets, two airlocks, and two of the inserts to make it. Plus, you will be getting a $10 um, Visa card, so you can go to Walmart or wherever you buy your jars from and buy you a couple of half-gallon jars, and you'll be able to make your own sauerkraut. So, what you have to do for the video, comment down below. That's it. And I'm sorry, but this is only going to be good for those in the United States because shipping overseas just gets complicated. Um, so, sorry, but um, just for those in the United States. So, all you have to do is comment below. You don't have to say anything in particular. I'm not asking you to like this video. I'm not asking you to share this video. I'm not even asking you to subscribe to the channel just comment below and that way I'm going to know that you once saw the video and that you are a regular supporter of mine and I really appreciate it guys. Without you guys the channel wouldn't have gotten as far as it had considering I didn't really start out to have a YouTube channel. It was kind of an accident the way it happened but I've, I've enjoyed doing it and I share when I can. 
So I really appreciate it. But if you did find this video helpful, please give it a like. Um, you know, just a thumbs up helps. And those comments always help in the comment section below. So I really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You never know what you may learn on my channel. So until next time, guys, be blessed.